webinar is entitled Planning for the Retirement You Want. Our presenter is two-time alumna Jacqueline Sinclair Parker, Senior Financial Advisor with BAC Merrill Lynch. In her role, Jacqueline provides a focused, comprehensive approach to creating financial strategies for individuals and businesses. She offers creative strategies and financial advice in areas of retirement planning, wealth preservation, asset allocation, income generating investment, and income distribution to help maintain client lifestyle. She takes great pleasure in working closely with clients, assisting them in making informative decisions about their future, both short-term and long-term. She has worked with Merrill Lynch for the past 10 years. She also arranges financing through Bank of America for residential investment and commercial properties. She leverages the expertise of internal Merrill Lynch specialists to assist clients in pursuing their financial goals. Jacqueline received her bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and an MBA from RIT. She also hosts holds Series 7, 6, and 66 FINRA registrations, as well as life and health insurance licenses. Prior to joining Merrill Lynch in 2006, Jacqueline worked at Xerox Corporation for 13 years in various positions throughout the value chain at Xerox. She worked as a manufacturer engineer, commodity buyer, new business development manager, and a Six Sigma belt, I'm sorry, black belt engineer. She's got quite a diverse background. We're thrilled to have her with us. Welcome, Jacqueline. Let's get going. Thanks, everyone. I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, as Cindy said, I am an alumni from um, RIT, and I did switch careers about 10 years ago into finance. Um, before we get started, I'd like to share a video of what Merrill Lynch has to offer and why we're bullish on the future. everyone. Hopefully everyone got a little overview of why Merrill Lynch is bullish on your future. Um, what I wanted to do today is just to kind of go through and just talk about a basic thing of planning for the retirement that you want. I'm sure everyone would like to have a very um, enjoyable retirement and some people have a different time horizon, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. But uh, we're just going to start with the basic. If you're just getting into the workforce or you've been in the workforce and had a challenging last 10 years, and want to reactivate your uh, retirement planning, uh, we'll just start and just kind of give you a basic of how to go about um, that. Okay. Okay. Meeting your needs today with preparing for tomorrow. Let's start with a common concern for many of us. You know you need to save towards retirement, but how much? That's usually a big question of how much do you really want to save, or how much do you need, or how much you think you're going to need. Or maybe you have other concerns or questions about retirement. If so, you're not alone. Only 20% of retirees are very confident about having enough money to live comfortably through retirement. The remainder don't feel at all that confident, but having a plan, one that can accommodate your life as it changes, 
can help you have more confidence about meeting your needs today while preparing for your future. Recently, uh, advance in medicine, combined with the growing prevalence of healthy lifestyles, have lengthened the average American life expectancy and has helped to redefine how we think about retirement. Uh, a couple, maybe 20 years ago, uh, individual, or say 50 years ago, individual are expected to live longer. In fact, about 30 years longer than people did 100 years ago. Today, the average life expectancy in the U.S. is almost 79 years. With a healthy 65-year-old couple, there's a 92% chance that one of them will live until age 85, a 79% chance one will live to 90, and a 53% chance one will live to 95. Since I've been at Merrill for the last 10 years, I've had maybe about a third of my book of clients that's in there over 87 years old and probably about 10% are in their 90s. I'm sure we'll, we've all welcomed the prospect of living a long life. With a longer lifespan, we hope to remain active and healthy later in life, engaging in activities that bring us enjoyment and personal fulfillment. When discussing how to plan for the future and the possibilities, those, late, those later years in life, it's helpful to start by first identifying what's important to you. Is it your health, family, leisure, giving, work, home? What are your priorities? Spending time with your family, starting a new business, pursuing your dreams, working on hobbies, or increasing your community involvement, or all the, of the above. Decide how you want to live during retirement by defining your life priorities is the first step in creating a plan to help position you for the retirement you plan. The traditional notion of retirement is quickly becoming a thing of the past. Many people who are nearing retirement say they would like to include some type of work in their future. Some view retirement as the opportunity to start an entire new career rather than continue the same line of work they're, they're in now. And others consider retirement a chance to pursue opportunities they may not have had the time or freedom to enjoy when they're working full time. So as we go through today's presentation, we encourage you to ask yourself, what does retirement mean to you? And what are you prepared to do to help to get there? After you've defined your priorities, life priorities, through thought about your goals, there are other steps that can help you find the way forward. First, consider your potential source of retirement income. Some sources might include Social Security, a pension, and any savings you may have. As a starting point, Marilyn suggests that you may need approximately 90% of your annual pre-retirement after-tax income to maintain your current standard of living in retirement. From what I've seen thus far in my practice, most people use about the same amount of money for the next five years after retirement. So if they made $100,000, they are spending $100,000 plus for five years after uh, in their retirement. Next, estimate your potential expense in retirement. Necessities such as mortgage payment or rent, insurance and taxes, expenses related to your automobile, utilities, food and clothing, and health care. Add, add in what you'd like to have for discretionary spending, such as gifts, entertainment, leisure, vacation, and hobbies, as well as miscellaneous expenses. Then compare your potential income to your expenses estimated expenses, were you on target or did you find that you may want or need to put aside more than you are currently? And finally, use this information to create a retirement income plan designed to last throughout your retirement. Think about your short, intermediate, and long-term goals, your potential expenses, 
and your corresponding income needs can help you map out your retirement plan and keep you on track. Social Security is not enough. Perhaps you're thinking Social Security will cover my expenses. I don't need a retirement plan. But the reality is that today, Social Security covers less than half of retirement income needs. In fact, the Social Security Administration say it only makes, you, makes up one-third of the income. That's less than half of what you may need. So how else can you find your retirement some income may come from pensions, which are very far and few. Most companies are not really, uh, really don't have any pensions anymore. They usually have some sort of a defined um, contribution, individual contribution, like 401k plans and 403 plans. Saving or income for assets such as investments. Other income may come from earnings at a full or part-time job during retirement. Let's look more closely at these additional income sources. Guaranteed income sources include Social Security and any, any other income from a pension. But as, just, as we just saw, Social, Social Security likely won't be enough to fully fund your retirement income needs. Saving and investments such as a bank account or retirement accounts may include both tax advantage and tax accounts. A healthy savings account, also known as an HSA, is a way to save money to help pay for qualified medical expenses, such as a visit to the doctor, prescriptions, and eyeglasses, to name a couple of the examples. If you don't have enough regular income for one source, any equity you may have in your home might help to close that gap. Perhaps you have other miscellaneous sources of income, such as rent or royalties, and if you continue to work during retirement, you may be able, be able to postpone Social Security or distribution from your retirement account or both, which can help stretch the assets you've accumulated for retirement. When should you start collecting Social Security benefits? An important question related to retirement income is when should you start collecting Social Security benefits? You can choose reduced benefits as early as 62. If you start benefits before your full retirement age, which is determined by your date of birth, your benefits is permanently reduced. Or you could take a full benefit at the age of the full retirement age. Or you may get increased benefits if you delay taking your benefits until after your full retirement age. Social Security will increase your benefits every year you wait up to the maximum age of 70. And I think there's like a 8% increase every year on, after your full retirement until age 70. To get an estimate of your benefit to find your full retirement age, visit your Social Security website at www.ssa.gov. Working during retirement. Perhaps you're thinking about working during part of your retirement or cycling between work and leisure. Working longer can help you pay off debt, further fund your portfolio, or support extra expense and fund splurges. It may also allow you to delay tapping into your retirement savings until much later. Many people say they want to keep working after they retire for stimulation satisfaction and social connections. Uh, some people forget that just retiring, if you don't have a plan from a social standpoint also, it can be a little lonely. <laughs> These factors are nearly as important as continuing income to Americans when asked what their top reason is for planning to work during retirement. And while pre-retirees think they'll miss the additional income, the most when they stop working, those who have already retired said that they miss out in the workforce friendship. Uh, beyond the personal satisfaction you may get from working longer, it's important not to spend too much of your retirement assets during this period. 
as I mentioned earlier, that some people, after they retire, they spend more or just as much um, as, they, as they did when they were working. You need to keep your money growing tax deferred as long as you can, or it could be difficult to maintain the lifestyle you want to in later retirement. Two ways to defer money for retirement. There are two popular ways to invest for retirement, 401k plans and similar types of employee-sponsored plans. Some, um, if you're in the educational system, it's like a 403b, um, or if you're a doctor, some, again, 403bs or a TIA craft, or an individual IRA. Both 401ks and IRAs may offer tax-deferred growth potential which means investing er earnings are not taxed until you take the withdrawal, but there are significant difference between an IRA and a 401k. Costs can differ greatly between 401ks and IRAs, so it's important that you review the cost carefully. Your 401k plan might have a long loan feature that allows you to borrow from the account, and that's usually with the corporations, uh, if you work like a Xerox Kodak. We usually have these 401k plans where you can take a loan. You can't borrow from an IRA. Uh, with the 401k plan through your employer, your contributions can be deducted right from your paycheck. A 401k plan will follow the parameters set by your employer, including investment options and tools and service to help you with your retirement planning. Under the current tax rules, the limit for contributions for a 401k is much higher than the contribution limit for an IRA. With an IRA, you may find great investment flexibility and choices, and you may be able to work with a financial advisor. With a 401k, you're limited to the choices provided by your employer. Make the most of your 401k. An easy and convenient way to prepare for retirement is contributing to your company's 401k plan. Any contributions you make are deducted automatically from your paycheck and you decide how much to contribute with the plan or an IRS limit. If you feel that you can't contribute a lot to your 401k plan right now, start small. As we shall see, even a small amount contributed to your 401k plan regularly can add up over time. What I usually recommend to my clients, at least, um, you know, if you can at least um, do the match, because some of these companies, they give you like a 4% match or 3% match. If you put in 3%, they'll give you 3%, and that's money on the table that you're not, um, you're going to lose if you don't do that. So if you do decide, at least if you can get, if your company has a match, at least try to get that amount into the uh, plan because that's free money on the table. Um, making um, catch up contributions. As just mentioned, if you're over, if you're age 50 or older, you may be able to make a catch up contribution to your retirement plan or IRA. These contributions are designated to help you set aside more for retirement as it approaches. To be eligible for a catch-up contribution, you must contribute the maximum amount allowable to your retirement plan or IRA. After that point, you can contribute an additional amount as determined by the limit set by the IRS. Let's look at an example of two individuals, Dylan and Eva, who participated in their own company retirement plan. In this hypothetical scenario, their plan rules allow for 20% normal pre-tax contribution and a 10% catch-up contribution. If you are over 50, but participants make 50% 50, 50,000 annually, they have both been able to contribute the maximum allowable of 20% to their plan. As they both turn 50 this year, Dylan decides to contribute to continue to contribute the plan maximum of 20% normal pre-tax, while Eva chooses to contribute an additional 5% for the catch-up on top of the plan maximum of 20%. Both plan to retire at age 65. 
but Eva could potentially have $60,064 more than Dylan after 15 years based on an average annual effective rate of return of 6%. Eva's thinking about trying to contribute the plan's maximum 10% catch-up contribution next year if she can. As this example shows, taking advantage of catch-up provisions can have a big impact on your account's value. And as you can see, Dylan has 240 at the age of 65, and Eva has a little bit over 300,000. What's the difference between a traditional IRA versus a Roth IRA? Many people wonder about the difference between the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. While both can help you build wealth for retirement, they offer different advantages depending on your age, current income, and distribution goals. In general, a traditional IRA offers tax-deductible contributions and the ability to defer tax until retirement. A Roth requires that you pay the taxes at the time you make the contribution, but withdrawals are federally tax-free. In addition, there is no age limit to open a Roth IRA and no required minimum distribution once you hit the age of 70 and a half, and that's what we call RMD, which is a traditional IRA. You must begin uh, taking your RMD at 70 and a half. If you don't, then there's uh, a tax penalty by the IRS. Okay, how much can you contribute to an IRA in a 401k each year? There are limits on the amount of money you can contribute to each year to an individual IRA and a Roth IRA. In 2017, if you are under age 50, you can contribute up to 5,500 per year. If your age is 50 and older, you're 50 and older, at any time during the calendar year, you can contribute an additional 1,000 for a total contribution of 6,500. In comparison to your contribution up to the 18,000 in a 401k plan in 2017, and can make a 6,000 catch-up contribution if you're over 50 at any time during the calendar year. I have a question, but I can't read it because it's in the glass. Um, you have a question? Yes. So, Jackie, one of our uh, attendees said that you stated that you should plan on meeting 90% of pre-retirement after-tax income. So using that example of 100,000, and let's say I'm in the 25% income bracket, I would plan for $75,000 per year of income. And, it, and is that $75K pre-tax so that my gross would be less than that? I'm not sure that I got all the words. <laughs> well, I, I think if I understand your question, if, you, if we're looking at a gross number, say that you made, I think in my example, if you make 100 k 100 net, say that you're saying 100 net take home, and that's what you're spending, you're probably going to spend the same amount or 90% of that, so you'd be spending like $90,000 for the next five years after retirement. Okay. Start preparing now. Some of you might be thinking, I don't have any, any big expenses coming up. I won't be retiring for a long time. I'm, I'm starting, I start saving later. I'll start saving later. But here's why you should start thinking about it now if you aren't, aren't already. Take a look at this hypothetical example. Three people started contributing their employee-sponsored retirement plan, one at age 25, one at age 35, and one at age 45. They will retire at age 65. As you can see, they all put the same amount into the re their retirement plan over time, 48,000. But the one who contributed the least 
per month wound up with the most retirement. Why? Because this person started sooner and stayed in the plan longer. The longer you invest for your retirement, the more time for potential growth. So don't wait. And the reason being is that we have these cycles in the market. And as you can see, like in 2000, we had uh, a down market in the dot com, then the market, uh, we went into a very bullish market for about five, six years. Then in 2008, we had a down. 2008, 2009, we had that recession. And then we had a, a, a bull market until now, and we still have a bull market. So you need time to absorb some of these cycles. And if you got in like right before 2008, you would be way down, and you, you're, actually your portfolio would have rebounded. But if you came in like um, recently, you probably would not have made the money. If you sat out the, re, the rebound, you would not have recovered, you know, so that you got scared after 207, 209, and you took out your money and went into cash, and you sat there and thinking, oh, this market's not going to come back, or you're kind of timid, or you just stayed on the sideline with your cash and you decided to come back into the market uh, within the last two years, you probably would not have recovered yet because the recovery usually takes, once the market turns, the recovery is about nine months, nine to 10 months. And even as an advisor, we can't really tell you when it's gonna turn, but we know that when it does turn, within nine to 10 months, you recover about 80 to 85% of your monies if you have a diverse portfolio. Top concern in retirement, healthcare expenses. When talking about retirement, we need to discuss healthcare costs. Healthcare costs are now the top financial concern in retirement. With rising life expectancy, many retirees may face substantial healthcare expenses. I found that after someone is 65, mostly likely their mortgages are paid for, and you know, so they have a nice robust portfolio. Um, if and, and if you get ill and you have to take on, you know, get into like a assisted living or something severe, it can really wipe out your portfolio. So that's why uh, we are really concerned as far as when you're working with an advisor, making sure you're protected, you know, whether it's long-term care or some other um, type of insurance or make sure that you have funding allocated for health expenses. These expenses can be unpredictable and costly. And if you need to retire early due to health problems, that may reduce your earning years and your potential retirement savings too. Anticipating and preparing for health care costs should be part of your overall retirement plan. As you can see, estimated out-of-pocket care costs is 10 years, 50,000, 15 years, 91,000, 30 years. It could be over 300,000. Um, I did have a client once and um, they were in their, I think, late 70s, and the wife, I mean, they had a portfolio, just to give you an example, of maybe four, they had about a million dollars, and they, with the health care costs, they went through roughly about almost half a million within five years. So that's just to give you an example. Although you might be eligible for Medicare at age 65, Medicare might not cover all your health care expenses. Contributing to a health care savings account, or HSA, can help you save for medical expenses now and in the future. If you're enrolled in a high deductible health care insurance plan at work, your HSA contributions may be made with before tax dollars, which are not subjected to federal income tax and which may be deductible on your federal tax return. In many states, state taxes on HSA may also be waived. Any investment earning in your HSA account grow tax-free, including dividends, interest, and capital growth. And HSA lets you make tax-free distributions for yourself, your spouse, and any qualified dependents for qualified medical expenses such as a visit to the doctor, 
prescriptions, and eyeglasses. It also may cover some health care expenses that are not typically covered by insurance on Medicare. The IRS published a list of qualified expenses in Publication 502, Medical and Dental Expenses, available at the www.irs.com. Contact a qualified tax or legal counsel to discuss your own situation before establishing an HSA. Tips for, successfully, tips for a successful investment strategy. Um, key tabs on your investment strategy can help you make any needed adjustments to your retirement income. If you personally or financial situation changes, Using some or all types of tips may help you keep your plan on track. Find the appropriate asset mix for your goals, timetable, and risk tolerance, and allocate your investment mix to different asset classes, stocks, bonds, and cash equivalent. Diversify your account to help protect against market volatility, and we will have market volatility. Avoid chasing performance, in other words, don't buy securities just because they have recently gone up in price. Rebalance your account regular to help stay on target. Review your strategy at least once a year or whether you have a major life changes. For example, are you still saving for your children's education or have they completed school? Are you now helping your parents financially? Have you changed jobs? Have your income level changed? or have you gotten married or divorced? While asset allocation, diversification, and rebalancing don't ensure a profit or protect against loss in declining markets, they can be effective strategy to help you manage the risks associated with investing. Choose an appropriate investment mix. Oh, these are just several we have five different mixes here, um, and they're very, all hypothetical. Uh, with a different asset allocation, each portfolio represents a different mix of these three basic asset class, stocks, bonds, and cash equivalent. The portfolios range from conservative, which is on the extreme left, to aggressive in terms of investment risk. As you can see, the mix of stocks, bonds, and cash equivalent changes as we move from conservative aggressive. The conservative portfolio has the highest allocation to cash equivalent and the smallest allocation to stock. The aggressive portfolio on the right, on the other hand, has the highest allocation to stock and no or very small allocation to cash equivalent. In general, you would choose an allocation that makes sense for you based on your resources, investment goals, risk tolerance, and time frame. So for an example, if you're about to retire, there's no way that you should be in an aggressive portfolio. Vice versa, if you're in your 20s, there is really no reason unless you're planning to buy a home or something major purchase that you should be in a very conservative portfolio. Your plan options for investment. Your plan at work offers a number of investment options to help you create your retirement portfolio. If you choose a mix of investment options on your own, keep a few things in mind when considering your choices. How a particular fund might help you achieve your goals and objectives, what strategies the fund use in pursuing those objectives, the cost involved in owning the fund and how the fund has performed over time. Remember, past performance is no guarantee uh, for future results. Uh, advice access. When you're participating in your company's retirement plan, you may feel that choosing your investment and contribution rate can be challenging. You're not alone because many people feel this way. Your company has made professional guidance available 
to you at no additional charge. The Advice Access Service provides answers to questions participants ask every day. How much do I need for retirement? How much should I contribute to my 401k plan? How should I invest my money? How should I withdraw my retirement assets? Am I on track with my goals? The answers to these questions are personalized, tailored to your financial situation. So what you probably want to do is either sit down with a financial advisor who can probably assist you with some of that matter, and then they can help you or kind of give you some sort of a guidance with what you're do, doing at work. And it's really just an educational because since uh, most advisors do not have the assets, we're just doing pretty much an educational type of um, consultation. Another type of um, strategy that companies have are target date funds that can help simplify investment. Uh, a target date fund may invest in a mix of stocks, bonds, cash equivalents, and other types of investments. Each one is managed to a specific target year. A fund, a fund approaches the target date is mixed of investment usually becomes more conservative, that is, more invested in bonds and less invested in stocks. While these funds may be convenient ways to have a diverse portfolio with a single investment choice, it's important to remember that the target date for these funds is the approximate date when an investor plans to start withdrawing the assets for his or her retirement account. The principal value of these funds is not guaranteed at any time, including at the target date. How would you pick one? Generally, you decide when you will be would like to retire or when you will need to withdraw the money and then pick the fund that year is entitled. Remember that diversification does not ensure a profit or protect against loss in declining markets. I said a lot of these companies, they have a target date that you're going to retire in 2030 and they have the mix, the asset allocation mix. And then as you progress, get closer to retirement, it shifts from being more aggressive to less aggressive and, and so forth. You become a lot more conservative as you get closer to retirement. Goal managed portfolio rebalancing. With goal management, you can choose from a series of portfolio models. Each one offers a mix of investment options from your plan, and each has a different level of risk from conservative to aggressive. Each portfolio model is rebalanced on a regular basis. It's usually like once a year, and it we takes out the emotions out of it. They just say on January 1st, they're just going to rebalance, and they look at where the market is, and they rebound to keep you, if you're 40% equity and 60% cash, or 60% bonds, they want to keep that conservative mix. On January 1st, they just do an overall review of the portfolio and see and get you back to that target. If you're unsure which of your plans investments to choose, you may want to consider um, talk, you know, probably calling your benefits manager. With goal manage manager, you can choose from a series of target dated portfolio models. Each portfolio model offers a mix of investment options from your plan and one in each managed to specific target years. As the model approaches the target date, its mix of investment generally becomes more conservative, that is more investing in bonds and less in stocks, as I mentioned before. While a target date portfolio model may be a convenient way to have a diverse portfolio, with a single investment choice. Remember, the goal management using target date portfolio model is custom solution designed to support gradual shifts in the asset allocation models to become more conservative as the target date approaches. The target date shown in the goal management portfolio model represents the approximate date when the investor plans to start withdrawing the assets from his or her retirement. The principal value of the target date Portfolio model is not guaranteed at any time, including the target date. How would you pick it? 
one, generally you decide when you would like to retire or when you need to withdraw the money and then pick the model with the year and its title. Action steps uh, as you near retirement. As you, get, as you get closer to retirement, there are a number of things to consider to help you get financially ready. Create a retirement income plan to help make sure your retirement timetable is realistic and test out your retirement budget to see if you can live on it comfortably. Maximize your retirement plan contributions and take advantage of catch-up contributions if you're eligible. Try to avoid withdrawing funds before the age of 59 and a half, or you may be required to pay a 10% additional federal tax in addition to ordinary income tax. Maintain your emergency fund to help you deal with unexpected expense more easily. Downsize your home might help you lower your expenses in retirement. If this is something you want to consider, you might also be able to use the money from the sale of your home as another source of retirement income. When you choose to live in, a retire in retirement, it could also make a difference in your pocketbook, but there are a variety of factors to consider. If you're thinking of relocating, how close do you want to be to family and friends? What about the cost of living? the weather. You also want to consider the quality and availability of medical care or cultural or other leisure activities in a different location along with the state, community, property, and inheritance laws. Understanding the required minimum distribution. This is primarily when you're 70 and a half, but it's kind of an important topic. So what are these requirement distributions we mentioned and how they affect your retirement income? Let's take a look at Phyllis' situation as an example. Phyllis, age 69, plans to retire this year and wants to maximize the distribution from her retirement account. She knows that once she turns 70 and a half, she'll be required to take annual required minimum distribution or RMDs from her IRA and her employer's 401k plan. Phyllis will turn 70 on August 1st, 2017 and will be 70 and a half in February 1st, 2018. Her first distribution is no later than April 1st of the year, following the calendar year she turns 70 and a half. So on April 1st, 2019, Phyllis has to take our R&D. Since Phyllis decides to wait until April of the year after she turns 70 and a half, she will, will be required to take two distributions in that same year, one on April 29, 2019 for her 70th year and the other on December 31st, 2019 for her 71st year. If Phyllis decides to continue working and assume she didn't own 5% or more of her company, she would be able to delay RMD from her current employer's plan, but she would still be required to take from her any additional IRAs uh, from former plan, former employee plans. For more information about that RMD distribution, you know, you can consult your tax advisor. So as we said, the reason why you have to take RMD is because your 401ks, your IRAs are all tax deferred, and the IRS wants their monies. They want to make sure that you do not uh, leave that money to a, another generation who will not have to pay taxes on that money. So that they force you, they force you to take your distribution so that they can get their tax um, payment. Consider consolidating your accounts. If you have several different retirement accounts, including accounts at former employers or IRAs at different financial institutions, you may wish to weigh the benefits of consolidating them into a single uh, retirement account. In addition to simplifying, simplifying recorded record keeping, consider consolidating your accounts offers several potential benefits. You may pay less in account fees. 
You'll be able to see your entire investment mix at a glance, which can make it easier to manage your investment and track their performance. Income planning is easier when working with one account. When you reach a 70 and a half, R&D distribution may be a lot easier to calculate and easier to take when you have all your retirement assets in a single account. Be sure to take tax consequence. Talk to your um, tax advisor. Expenses and sales charges in your account and review any charges that may be associated with selling or buying investments either before or after you consolidate your account. Choose how to handle your retirement plan assets. If you've been participating in a 401k plan, you have choices for what to do with your 401k account. If you leave the company or retire, generally you can pick one of the four options. You can roll your assets to an IRA or convert to a Roth IRA. This can be a good long-term option because you continue to enjoy tax advantage growth potentially, and you typically have more options for investing in choosing beneficiaries. Note that you may only process one 60-day rollover between any and all of your IRAs in any rolling 12-month period, regardless of the number of IRAs you own. Leaving assets in your 401k plan can be a good short-term option if you're not sure of your retirement strategy. However, most plans require that you account, your account balance is at least 5000 to maintain your account after you stop working. Many also require that distribution begin at a certain age. Or if you continue working, your new employer may allow you to roll over the new ask, new uh, plan that will preserve your tax advantage. However, there may be a waiting period for participation. And if you work part-time, you may not be eligible to participate. Finally, you can withdraw some or all of your retirement assets. Keep in mind this option has tax consequence, so consider it carefully. If you do decide to just withdraw your 401k, or monies, there is a, a 20%. Um, you'll be taxed at the fed, your federal tax rate. So if you're in the 25 bracket, all that money will be taxed at your federal tax rate. So we really don't recommend that. We really recommend that either you roll into an IRA or another 401k plan. Each choice may offer different investment options and service fees and expenses, withdrawal option requirement, minimum distribution tax treatment, and provide different protection from creditors and legal judgments. These are complex choices and should be considered with care. You may want to seek professional guidance for your tax, legal, and financial advisors before um, moving forward with that. And the last topic we like to touch on, really, um, the importance of naming uh, beneficiaries. Uh, from your 401k and IRA accounts, you can name a beneficiary a person who would receive those assets in the event of your death. By naming a beneficiary, you can make sure that these assets pass on according to your wishes. You also avoid having your heirs face the potential delay and expense of probate for the asset. Your beneficiaries may also have the opportunity to extend, and um, we call it a stretch IRA, to tax it for earnings period of the assets. We'll take a look at the strategy at another time. But keep but be sure to keep your beneficiary information current and updated. That information will change occur in your life. In many cases, if you're married, your spouse will automatically be your beneficiary. If you're single and don't designate a beneficiary, typically your estate is your beneficiary. Default beneficiaries may be vary by institution, please check the default beneficiary designation and consult with your own legal advisor if you're unsure. Uh, one of the big thing here is that, um, as I said, if 401Ks, it usually goes to your spouse by default, but an IRA, you can name anyone um, on your, um, as a beneficiary. And sometimes what happens is people, they leave their job and they might have gotten divorced and they kept their ex-wife or ex-husband. 
on their beneficiary, and they're still working at the same place, and then all of a sudden something happens, and then they remarried, but they never updated their beneficiary, and the ex-wife or the ex-spouse actually has the right to that money because they are the beneficiary on file. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on this webinar. And um, do we have any questions, Cindy? Uh, now's the time. If you, anyone has any questions for Jacqueline, if you can get those in. Um, one question, is it ever too late to start saving retirement? I think you addressed that, but we can ask it again. Yeah. You know, I always say if you haven't started, let's start now. <laughs> you know, it's never too late. Um, the, the thing is to start. Okay, because some people think, oh, I'm 50, I haven't saved, and da da. It's better to just start, you know, just make it today and say, I'm going to start saving. And at least, I said, if you can get the match for your company, um, that, you know, sometimes it's like 4%, if you can at least get that fine. If not, I think the ultimate goal is just to start with a plan and then build, an, you know, your budget and then kind of look at ways that you can eliminate some of your additional expenses and see if you can pull, put that money um, aside for savings. And then if you do it through your 401k, you know, some people, like if they get a raise or they get an increase or bonus, they kind of use that money to kind of start with their 401k plan. Or any, as I said, any um, raises like once a year, they just kind of funnel that to their 401k to help start saving. So follow on to that question, um, you mentioned Budget. So I, I would imagine that in the process of putting together a retirement plan for, for your clients or for anyone, um, that perhaps one of the major excuses why there isn't a plan in place already is I don't have enough money. So um, do you work with clients? Is it customary to kind of go through that budget to figure out what you can carve out so that you put it towards retirement? Yeah, well, what I normally do when I meet with a client is just kind of try to understand what their goals and objectives are. And one of the main um, documents that I have is a budget. We kind of want to know what your expenses are because a lot of people are just, you know, they don't, they don't have a good grasp of what their expenses are. So once we identify what the expenses are, then we can identify what we can do for, to help you in the best thing. But you have to understand, everyone has to understand what their budget is, their expenses is, because um, even millionaires, <laughs> they have to look at their budget and say, can I afford to purchase this or not? Can I do this or not to um, free up some funds? So um, an expense, um, a budget is key for helping us to move forward to get into investing. Because we can invest and we can make a lot of money, but if your budget is out of whack, we're back to ground zero. <laughs> So I've heard it said that if you're saving for retirement, you should save for retirement first and then fund your college, your kid's education second. Is that still a true adage? Yes. Yeah. Then old wives to it. Yeah, that, that is still a, uh, true because one of the things, you can um, get loans for college, but you cannot get a loan for retirement. So we always say pay yourself first. Um, there's tons of scholarship loans, there's a lot of things that uh, a student, and they can even take out loans on themselves, but when you get into retirement, there's really no one that's going to give you a loan to maintain your lifestyle. <laughs> Let me know if you found one. Well, that, that would be great. I'd like one of those. Um, I guess yeah. I have one more question, and unless anybody else has any others, um, and now it's going to escape me after I said that. So it, as we're thinking about retirement, um, Presumably, you already mentioned starting. I mean, there's something in my Q and A here. So starting is any time is better than not starting at all. Um, but at some point, and you also mentioned that this, the the market has ups and downs. So right now we're in a tremendous up, but presumably, what goes up will come down. So, what sort of advice for folks kind of riding this current wave to? better safeguard what is potentially going to be inevitable, Well, assuming it is inevitable. Well, um, there's always money to be made in the market. There's always a bull in the market. So what I usually try to do is with my client is just trying to get into a, a funds that are very, um, you know, with the top of the brief companies. I mean, you're not going to see like your Microsoft going out of business, um, GE, 
I mean, there's a lot of com DuPont, there's a lot of companies that are, they're just not going to go out of business. So what you try to do, I mean, one of the simplest things, you can just do an index fund of the, the Dow Jones. You know, you do an index fund, and there's 500 companies in that fund, and unless all 500 companies goes out of business, <laughs> you should make some money. So it's really diversification, though, because you can't really chase a sector you know, a couple of years ago, healthcare was booming. Uh, then last year, it bust. Now, healthcare is back. So, you know, working with an advisor helps us to be able to rebalance and identify when to take out your profit, when to get out of a sector and rotate into the sectors that have really um, peaked and that are at the bottom and see if we can ride that up. So, um, clearly, there's as I said, the key is for diversification. Get a fund if you're just starting out. You know, target funds at your work are really diversified. Diversification is the key to manage risk. Thank you. All right, one last question did come in from Christopher. It's very specific, so I'm just going to read it. He says, hello, uh, I currently work for a nonprofit organization and I was not able to roll my previous employer's retirement plans into my existing one. A financial advisor suggested that I roll all my past plans into an IRA. Should I leave that alone or roll it over? Come they, see me. Come <laughs> and I'm just kidding. I think one of the things is um, the IRA gives you a lot more flexibility. And um, if you're working with an advisor, they can help you build um, a portfolio that's diverse based on your time horizon, your risk tolerance, and your goals to help you achieve your retirement um, um, lifestyle and goals. So I would prefer, one thing when you, leave, when you leave a company, you work for a company and you've left it, you really don't know what's happening with the funds, you don't know what's going on internally, so you're kind of like really removed from your investments. So I would recommend at least talking to your advisor and then coming up with a strategy with him or her and um, rolling it into an IRA. In an IRA, you can this you have everything out there to invest in. Whereas a company um, a portfolio, and we at Merrill Lynch sometimes are um, the plan sponsors. We have maybe about 30 funds in there. Whereas an IRA, you have about depending on the company. I know here at Merrill, we have about 6,000 different mutual funds, and then we have all the stocks. So. An IRA gives you a bigger platform to invest, and it can adjust to your risk tolerance and time horizon. All right, Christopher, I hope that was helpful. Um, that's all the time we have. We are literally out of time. Thank you for joining us. If you have any further questions for Jacqueline, feel free to email them to ritalum at rit.edu. Um, otherwise, you can tweet them to us at, at rit underscore alumni with the hashtag meritwebinars. Jacqueline, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks to all of you out there for joining. Um, our next webinar is on Wednesday, August 30th, where we will bring back Mr. Bob Whipple, who will be presenting Building Trust in a Transition, Merger, or Acquisition. Uh, Bob is an international trust expert. He's been, back, he's been with us a couple times. He's well worth tuning in for. So thanks again for joining us. You connected this webinar by closing the WebEx window. Let us know what you thought by taking a very brief survey which will pop up when you exit.